Latest data from Consumer Insight indicate average Kenyan woman would rather spend on her hair, her beauty, her body and her clothes rather than paying rent first. So today we have a sit down with Damar Nail and Gel Polish CEO and founder to find out the money in the nail polish business. This is Founders Connect Africa. Let's go and meet Washinga. So thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Um, I've seen Tharma a lot, I think my girlfriend uses it. And then when I found out that um, you are producing and manufacturing this nail polish in Kenya, I was very excited to come and learn um, how you started. And you know, manufacturing in Kenya is a bit, is a bit um, hard. There are very many manufacturing companies, but um, building something from scratch is normally very hard maybe you can start telling your story did you always want to be in manufacturing yes i have always been in love with the process of building things from scratch and seeing that make life easy make life exciting and just make life worth living is what has been um, a question that I've always wanted to find answers for. So how do you do it? What, what's the process? How, how long does it take? What, what results from manufacturing? Mm. So yes, and I've seen also people do it. I've always loved uh, visiting factories and just seeing how people come up with their own products. And that's such a lovely thing to see. Mm. So you had a thing of coming up with your own products. So um, did you, when, what did you study in school and did you just start immediately after you know, school that you decided to start manufacturing? Um, no, I studied financial engineering for my undergraduate and then for my master's I did strategic management. I thought I would be in the field of finance but life had it that I would just be in manufacturing. That's one because of passion and because of just um, living life in my own terms and looking for what the why the why are you doing this what what makes you sleep at night without having questioning your day yes yes I'm doing this now I don't have answers for it still mm -hmm. but one thing for sure is I wouldn't have had it any other way okay. did you have you ever been employed before um, not really. I I say not really because I was once employed, but I quit because I just found it was not my thing. And yes, I was employed in the financial engineering field. I found um, the the enthusiasm for me to wake up and every day go to work with a smiley face. I think that's very important because if you're going to spend majority of the days of your life working I think it would be best if you're happy while at it and for me so even when I was working I was still doing selling other brands on the side so yeah nail care brands on the side so I decided to just pursue it full time mm -hmm. yeah so why why the nails why the nails <laughs> uh, from a very young age I've been in love with beauty I love beauty products, I love the whole process of just making you feel good, I love color. So what a beautiful way to incorporate this on every day to day and just making you feel bold with any color that you choose from colorless to reds to blues. It's such a nice way to have a pick me up when you're just going about your day to day. And yes, I've started with nails because I want to grow my brand to also other products, mm -hmm. beauty products. Other beauty products. So you started with nails first. How was it? How was the process of um, from scratch and, 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 and coming to something that is visible, it's a product? How crazy was it? Maybe you could maybe give us that, 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 that uh, history of how it was. Yeah, so the process was, as you said, crazy because I started with uh, one brand that I was distributing for, but they decided to let go of all their international distributors. So I was left with a lot of dead stock, which I still do. 
And so I was like, okay, let me now start something on my own and just create a brand on my own terms. And that's why Thama was formed because I have the vision for it and every day I strive to achieve the goals that I've put for myself. So the process is very, as you said, crazy. <laughs> yeah, so I started with small, small try and error. So just having, mixing this and that, mixing this and that, and also a lot, a lot of consultation from professionals. I actually had to have a sit down with a cosmetic formulator and we developed the brand. Even after he left, we also had to have a lot of corrections done on the brand. And you know what, even big brands, the biggest of the brands still have additions when they're trying to improve their product. They still have from this version to the other. So every day we just strive to have the best version of nail polish and also having it at a very affordable price. So providing quality at the right price. Right price. Yeah, you talked about cosmetic simulator. Formulator. <laughs> so you actually didn't know how to do that cosmetic? No, no, no. I had to get a lot of professionals to help me, yeah. I could not do it on my own. It's a team. Mm. I still do not know everything. And where I'm stuck, I always seek counsel. And I'm blessed to have people around me who are willing to help me through this step of the journey. Mm. Yeah. So when you got the formulator, you knew the formula that you wanted to use. Um, and now you have a good product that you can show. Um, and then now there was putting up the factory and stuff yeah. how much did it cost you and how crazy was it as well <laughs> uh well the process even like when we had to sit down and we formulated the first batch we also had to give it time and see how does it behave when it's exposed to certain conditions how before i invested into the factory and all uh how long does this product what's its shelf life how long does it expire and uh okay if if it, if it does expire does it leave any residuals in the bottle if it does that do the colors separate there's so much chemistry that goes behind it so we had to sit down and wait for that time to pass and do all colors behave the same or they behave differently so after everything after we got those answers that's when i decided to now invest in a small machine that does the mixing and the packaging the filling in the bottles let's just say i'm still investing so i don't have an answer for that because i am still investing and i'm still not where I want to be, but it's working. We have a product. We have a product and it's working. Yeah. Wow. Um, so now you have a product. Uh, apart from now the, the fact that you're still investing, how are you distributing the product now? Uh, we do have a major um, chemist that does the distributorship. And we also have stockists in Nairobi CBD and out of Nairobi CBD. We also sell from our online store on our website and also our social media pages. So we really try to provide the product as fast as we can, whenever we can. So since, you, let's say if you reach, reach out to us on social media, if you want a product, we will um, ask you where you're located and try to connect you to our nearest distributor's shop outlet. And if if there is none within the vicinity, we take it upon ourselves to do the delivery. Okay. How did you um, decide that a, a, a major chemist, probably it's a major chemist that has many outlets in, in Nairobi or in, in, in the country, how did you decide that you wanted your distribution to be a chemist? How do you come up with a distribution? Do you, where do you find these distributors? Uh, first of all, you have to be compliant and compliant, you have to be a compliant company. By uh, being a compliant company, I mean you have to have your certificates ready. And by certificates, I mean your business registration certificates, your tax compliance, CAD, NEMA, all that, you, your city county license, you have to have all that. And so you come up with a company profile and just take samples and say, this is what we have, 
even for them they also take time before they list you as a supplier because they also have to test if their product is safe on the clients and if the product how how well does the product do so it's it's really a lengthy process so you really have it takes time every good thing takes time so it's not like you just walk into their door and just say here have this no it there's a lot that happens uh, yeah how long did you take oh six months before yeah. the yeah, was able yeah. To yeah, once we started talks with them, it took six months, six or more actually. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So now you have the product. Tell us more about um, the product because you said you started with one and now you have two products. Yeah. Tell us more about the product. So now we do regular nail polish. By regular nail polish, I mean that's Tama regular nail polish and it's self drying. So you just do one coat of this coat you do the color that you prefer the color that makes you feel good and then you do a top coat then you just let it dry for like five to seven minutes and you're good to go we also do have gel polish gel polish requires a uv machine to dry so that one it depends you can do one to two minutes and you're good to go yeah so we also we are looking into increasing the product range and having more products. Okay. Yeah. Which, which, which products are you looking at? Uh, our nail polish removers, that's in the pipeline. So yeah, that's definitely going to come within this year. Within this year. Wow. Um, what have been the major challenges that uh, has affected the business? Uh, uh, of course, with COVID, uh, we, we import a lot of raw materials and with COVID, the things that we could not source for locally and the waiting time was so much so we had to wait for that because um, what was being given priority were medical products and equipment so we had to wait for that also now with that when um, the products came in um, business was a bit slow but it started picking up and we are really grateful that it's it's our new normal now that we are working with also another challenge i would want to say is just increasing the product range because you see in nail care we want to have everything to do with nail care and nail care is very broad there is cuticle oil there is uh hand hand lotions and creams and we eventually want to do that mm. yeah so uh, okay yeah. okay interesting and um on the manufacturing side um okay so like where we are located we have sometimes issues with power so but we're in talks with the people who provide power and we've just asked them to come and at least fix it for us so that we now the problem we have is we do production in phases and we would love to do it uh 24 7. so that way we would love to have stable electricity so mm -hmm. if we have that we would really be grateful because now there's no downtime yeah there's no downtime um on this area especially in the beauty industry we see a lot of imported brands um and some brands could not be very they could be very fake you know some of the imported brands is that something that's really affecting you in your business importation of substandard goods you see the beauty industry is a low to barrier entry industry meaning anyone can come in and maybe the people who uh, regulate it maybe they get overwhelmed so at the end of the day we can't rule them out because the products are in the market and there's still competition mm. so we can't rule out the fact that they have a market and their products sell that's why they're doing it so it's something we really work with knowing it's there because as as much as we we try to mitigate um how 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 they do it by that i mean um we we are always on the lookout for people who would try to imitate our products yeah, now that one, we really, we are really in, there are actually government agencies where you can report. 
such things that they happen so we are always on the lookout if someone buys something and they say it's sus so we check from the discoloring to the packaging yeah so once they interfere with us now that's when it becomes an issue but other fake products they're there they've always been there i think they will continue being there yeah. and we we really try our best to um engage the consumer and let them know how good our product is how safe our product is like for our product it's seven free meaning by seven free i mean it doesn't have seven poisonous chemicals that you will occasionally find in other nail polish brands by seven free it means when nail polish is being formulated there are basic ingredients when you mix they form poisonous chemicals mm -hmm. Let me use Leighton's language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, a, a good manufacturer and a good formulator would include another process to remove them, to extra extract them from the final product. Mm -hmm. So other brands uh, find it to be a bit too expensive mm -hmm. to go that route and to remove them. So they will include them, but they will not say that they are there. <laughs> so how do you know as a consumer? How do you know? When you apply your nail polish and it leaves a discoloring on your nail, that's one thing that you should look out for. Number two, if your nail bed starts forming an unsmooth surface, once you've applied nail polish, that's something you should also question and see why, why did this happen? Because that's something unnatural. Number three, how your skin around your nails behaves once you start, use a certain brand. So when you look into all these things and see there's a problem, then I would strongly advise you to discontinue because it's just going to cause more harm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Do men wear nail polish? <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask this question. <laughs> good question yeah. yes they do and actually now we can see some men doing vibrant colors and buying colors that they're really in the zone when they're choosing colors and good for them mm -hmm. anything that makes them feel confident and just makes them feel them at that particular time we really recommend it mm -hmm. yeah um going back to your journey do you feel like there's one huge mistake you did that you, you learned from? Um, this is because if someone is watching right now and would like to venture into um, the manufacturing side, what are those small or huge mistakes that you did um, during your journey that someone else would avoid? Uh, I would say is really, really understanding your market because you might come up with a product like my huge mistake is the first product that i did i still have dead stock for it because number one people did not know what it was and number two no one wanted to spend money on it because it was a bit pricey so i would advise someone to really really take time and just study the market and see how it behaves and our market is very versatile the kenyan market is very versatile it's very erratic, it's very spontaneous. So throughout seasons, people behave differently and by people behaving differently, it means also the market changes. So what's hot this time, the market trend is different the next time. So please take time to just research and what you think might be a need, might actually not be a need. <laughs> <laughs> you may think you're solving a problem, and there's no problem at all. There is none. Mm. Yes, there is none. You will come up with a product and people will be like, oh, okay, but this works perfect for me. Yeah. Wow. That's a great... That's a, so do a lot of research and development before coming up with a product. Yeah, and when you fail, get back up and just keep on trying, keep on pushing. Even, the like I said, the biggest brands are still... They are con continuously improving on their brands. That's why, like even in phones, we are always doing a new version. We are always trying to keep up because you know what? If they were so comfortable in the first version, life would stop at that. But that means even the best of the best are still improving on their product. So 
keep on improving if there's something that can make your product better implement it do it it might take one week it might take one year but just do it yeah. you said you created a product yes. and then it failed uh, how much did you lose a lot <laughs> I still, um, uh, actually, because it's a complimental, it's a complimentary product to nail polish. We just give it out for free now. <laughs> so is that easy? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it, it, instead of having it as bad stuff, we just you know what, it's okay. Mm. It's a loss I am willing to take. Mm. It it was very, and you can imagine I did it like two years ago mm. and at that time it's not like you have all the money in the world yeah. so <laughs> did you cry oh yes <laughs> uh -huh. yeah uh, once they announced that they they they, 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 they they're not they're no longer dealing with international distributors i was yeah. like what are you talking about yeah, yeah. It was just a very dark time for me. And remember, that's the first time I'm trying my hand in business. Yeah. So I just thought that the road would be like that from then yeah. henceforth. So it was a very dark time because you know you have to talk yourself into picking yourself up and you have to have the end in mind. So yeah, that's when I decided now to start my own thing and have my own brand at my own terms. Okay. Your last... Um Parting shot in terms of um, building Kenyan brands. Do it anyway. Yes, just do it. If that's what you love and that's where your heart is, do it. You might not find, you might not have all the answers then, but answers come with time. Answers come with experience. Mm. Answers come with consultation. So just do it. And you know what? It's amazing. The feeling is so amazing. Sometimes you will have very dark days. Those days are there, but you just keep the end in mind. You have your vision. You know what you want. So just continue doing it. Do it anyway. Yeah. Wow. You've had it, folks. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Oh yeah. So this is. Are you wearing? Are you wearing your own brand? This is very beautiful. Yes. This is my brand. I'm wearing Pama. This is gel polish. And it's called lit, so it, it just yeah, creates, it's yeah, it's it definitely. is. <laughs> it's a clean white that I love wearing because it complements my outfits. Mm. And for your girlfriend, yes. I'd love to give her a few pieces. Yeah. As long as she mentions us on social media. I will make her mention. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, when we name our colors, we name them. Uh, according to what inspires us. So like for this shade, this is Mombasa Raha, yes. which I'll give her. Hey, Mombasa Raha. Yeah, uh -huh. then there's also Watamu Tamu. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, then there's also Fearless Moran. Fearless Moran. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where do you get these names from though? Uh, it depends yeah. the mood I'm feeling at that particular time. Yeah. Actually, like every day I have my notebook with me. If a name comes on my mind, I'll just note it down and yeah. have it named on the next batch. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. So much. You're welcome.